Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird to actually be filming an intro again. Last week you saw a new upload and that was my first one for a while. That was one that was actually pre-recorded. This one is also pre-recorded. This is one that I filmed when I was still pregnant with our son. He is now four months old, which is insane. But this was when I was prepping all of my postpartum freezer meals and they were so, so helpful. That is like my number one main tip if you are pregnant, especially if you are gonna be doing a lot of solo mom duty if you don't have a husband who gets paternity leave like mine it is very very busy he literally went back to work the day after we came home just a busy time of year for us he's a farmer he had to get back in the fields for planting so these freezer meals were so helpful i hope you enjoyed today's video and let's go ahead and get into it all right, so the first meal that we are starting with is Crock-Pot Mississippi Chicken. Now this is one that I've made over and over again in my family. We love this recipe. So I'm just starting off by writing on my Ziploc bags. Anytime that I'm making a freezer meal, I always use gallon Ziplocs, or most of the time anyway. I just write the recipe on them, how to cook it, if I need to thaw it overnight. So for this recipe, you are going to want to thaw it overnight, or you can throw in the crock pot. Frozen is totally fine too, but I'm just prepping my bags here and we're gonna get started. So for this recipe, I really like to use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I usually will get one of these big packages and then split it in two recipes and that's the perfect amount for my family. I wanna say it's about two pounds or so in each bag here. For the seasoning on this chicken, you're gonna want a package of a Jew gravy mix. I like to split this between the two bags. If you like yours a little bit stronger and a little bit on the saltier side, then you can go ahead and use one per bag. But I really like to split both of these packages up. It works perfect. I find that it's about the right amount of salt that way. And then you're gonna do the same with the ranch seasoning, split that in half, and then you're gonna to wanna to do about half a stick of butter in each bag. For the pepperoncini peppers, you can add however many you want. If you add more, it's gonna be more tangy and less obviously will be less tangy but I usually do about four or five per bag and then just a little splash of that um, juice in there and it's perfect then I'm just gonna seal these up pop them in my freezer and then when I go to cook these I will put them on high in the crock pot for about four hours until the chicken is fully cooked through For this next recipe, I am making crock pot barbecue chicken. Now this is a tried and true recipe that I will make over and over again. So I'm just starting by mixing up all of the sauce. And no, I do not just put barbecue on my barbecue chicken. I love to add a few other ingredients that just make it super flavorful and delicious. But into each bag here, I'm just starting off with one cup of the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Here I'm adding about a quarter cup of zesty Italian dressing and then a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then I'm also gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. I feel like this really brings out the flavor. You're gonna want about a tablespoon of that, just a tiny bit of salt and pepper. You can also add garlic powder if you want to. It's just personal preference. I like to add just a little bit. And then I'm adding in a couple of chicken breasts in there. So this day I did about three. If you have super large ones, you might wanna do two, just kind of depending on the side. And then I'm just going to seal these up. I'm gonna cook these again in the crock pot on high for about four hours and this is delicious shredded up in wraps you can do it over salads you can do it in sandwiches it's just a delicious versatile chicken the next meal that we're making is crock pot buffalo chicken. This is another super versatile chicken recipe. So I'm just starting off with like three to four chicken breasts in each bag. I would say probably three unless they're on the smaller side. And then I'm adding about a tablespoon of ranch seasoning in here along with some wing sauce. I usually will just use the generic brand and you're gonna want about a half a cup. You can do a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on your preferences. And then you're just gonna seal this up pop it in your freezer. When you go to cook it, you're just gonna cook it on high in the crock pot for four hours. You can shred this up and serve it in wraps, on salads, sandwiches. It's also really good on pizza, but it's a really yummy recipe. 
The next freezer meal are these chicken queso tacos. Now this is definitely my favorite chicken taco recipe. I'm just starting off with one can of Rotel tomatoes in each bag. You're gonna want about a package of taco seasoning or two tablespoons. I like to use the homemade mix, which I will show you later on in this video. And then you're gonna want to add in about half a jar of this queso into each bag. This is a large jar. I'm not sure how many ounces it was, but you're gonna want about half a jar in each bag. Of course, you can do a little bit more but I feel like this is about right for a freezer meal and then you're just gonna add your chicken in there so you're gonna want about I would say two to three chicken breasts just again depending on the size on this day I did three so that is this freezer meal and again this one's just gonna get cooked on high for four hours once it's done in the crock pot go ahead and shred it up serve this as tacos or it's also really good on salad or also in quesadillas so another really yummy freezer meal For this next dinner, we are making some chicken fajitas, which is one of my personal favorites. I have all my veggies prepped here, so I have one onion and three peppers for each of the bags. So just go ahead and thinly slice all of those up, and then you're just gonna add those right into your gallon size Ziplocs. So this recipe is actually one that you are gonna bake in the oven. This is not a crock pot meal. I will have the recipe linked below, and you can follow all of the measurements there to make it nice and simple. Then we're just gonna be adding in all of the seasonings and also some olive oil. So you're gonna want about two tablespoons of olive oil. And then for seasonings, you're gonna want a tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and then about half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then of course, you're gonna want a little bit of salt and pepper. Like I said, this recipe is going to be linked down below. Once you're done having in the freezer and you're ready to pull it out you're just gonna go ahead and thaw it overnight and then you're gonna toss this into the oven for about 400 degrees and then you do bake it for about 10 minutes on each side just toss all of those fajitas up so good and so delicious it turns out absolutely amazing and then of course I just have my chicken here that I'm adding in the recipe calls for about a pound of chicken I probably had closer to like a pound and a half here but you can do a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on what you have on hand and then you're just going to seal all of these up i know that was a lot of measurements so like i said the link for that recipe is going to be in my description box I recently made these fajitas again, but this time I actually served them over just some rice instead and it was so good. So if you want an alternative to having them in tortillas, rice is a really yummy option. All right, so for this next recipe, this one was a bit of an experiment, but we are gonna be making some grilled chicken. So basically this is like a grilled chicken marinade. You're gonna put everything into a bag and then pop it into your freezer. When you want a really quick and easy dinner, take it out the night before thaw it overnight and you're gonna have some really amazing marinade for your chicken so here I'm starting off with about half a cup of olive oil the recipe does call for canola oil but I always use olive oil and then you're gonna want a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce three tablespoons of soy sauce and then you're gonna want about a third cup of honey and then for the lime juice here, I always like to just use the pre-juiced lime. Of course, a regular lime would probably be better, but I am a little bit lazy. But I would say you're gonna want a little over a tablespoon of lime juice, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, or as you can see here, I'm just using regular mustard. I've used both and both work totally fine for this recipe. You're gonna want a good big scoop of minced garlic, about the equivalent of four cloves, some dried parsley, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and this is my favorite grilled chicken marinade ever. We've been making this one for quite a while, but this was my first time actually putting it in the freezer, and it turned out really, really well. The trick is to grill this low and slow on the grill, and it is absolutely delicious. Okay, so for this next freezer meal, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a meal. This is more of like a mom hack especially if you are a busy mom and you just need things that are quick and easy oftentimes, especially when it comes to dinner and you're losing your mind at the end of the day. That is me oftentimes. I a lot of times will stock up on ground beef if it's on sale. We do buy a quarter cow at a time, but like on this 
particular day I had bought a bunch of it in bulk from our local grocery store and it was a really good price too. So all I'm gonna do is cook this up in my pan, do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and this is the most versatile thing to have in your freezer i just freeze this totally pre-cooked in one pound increments and it is so convenient you've probably seen me cooking with this in a lot of my what's for dinner videos it is just so easy when you need something really quick for dinner and you didn't thaw out any meat or anything all i do is take this out of the ziploc i put it on a plate all I do is stick it in the microwave for like two minutes and it's perfectly thawed out, ready to pop into a pan for spaghetti, for tacos, for any sort of recipe that calls for ground beef. You can also cook it up with onions if you like your ground beef cooked with onions. But you guys, if you take nothing else from this video and you are a mom that needs a really, really quick and easy dinner idea, this is it. Just have some pre-cooked ground beef in there. Same with like pre-cooked chicken. It's just nice to have a pre-cooked meat that you don't have to think about and thaw out ahead of time. So try this out if you've never tried it before. One pound increments. I promise you, you will thank me later. It is the best thing ever. Next up, we are making some tacos, which is super basic, but before we actually get into how I make my tacos, I'm gonna share with you my taco seasoning recipe. I will have it linked down below too, but it's super easy and it's cheap to make yourself and you don't have any of the extra like additives and junk in there. But this is half a cup of chili powder, three tablespoons of garlic powder, three tablespoons of onion powder, three tablespoons of salt, three tablespoons of cumin, a tablespoon of oregano, tablespoon of paprika, a tablespoon of pepper. All you're gonna do is mix this up and then you can just store it in your little mason jar. Anytime you go to make tacos, you're gonna want about two tablespoons for one pound of ground beef. And it's really good taco seasoning. It's not as salty, I wouldn't say, as regular taco seasoning. It's way cheaper and it doesn't have all of the additives and junk in it, which is what I was trying to avoid. So I'm just getting that mixed up here and then I'll show you how I make my tacos. I always like to add chopped onion into my tacos. I just feel like it bulks up the meat a little bit and it adds a lot of extra flavor too. So here you see me chopping up two large onions. I would say you're gonna want about one small onion per pound of meat. So I'm doing four pounds of taco meat and two large onions, so. Add a little bit more or a little bit to less, just depending on what you prefer. I also sometimes will add in chopped green peppers into my tacos. It's a great way to sneak veggies in there too. So like I said, I'm just making four pounds of tacos here and then I'm gonna add in my chopped onion and then I'm just gonna brown this up. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and cook your ground beef as you normally would. Cook it till it's all the way cooked and then we're gonna drain off any of the excess fat. I will say we normally buy a quarter of a cow at a time and we still have some in our freezer but when I buy meat like this from the store, I feel like it's a lot more fatty than what we normally get from our local farmer. So there was a lot more fat to drain off. And then I'm just throwing that back into my pan with about a cup of salsa. And then this is where you're gonna want your taco seasoning. So like I said, you're gonna want two tablespoons of seasoning for each pound of ground beef. Add a little bit of water. And then I just like to simmer this for like five-ish minutes or so. And then you're just gonna let it cool so we can package it into bags. After it's packaged, I just use quart size freezer Ziplocs and I add about a pound each. I just divide it out. And again, this is one of those really quick and easy things to thaw out all I do is put it in the microwave for like two minutes and it's perfectly warmed up you can throw it into a pan or you can just do it in like a glass bowl warm it up that way and all you have to do is chop up like lettuce and whatever other fixings you like on your tacos and this is a really quick and easy dinner that's relatively healthy and you don't have to really plan for it you can just pull it out of the freezer on a whim when you did not plan anything ahead of time which happens to me all the time so this is a really helpful one as well this next freezer meal is probably one of my favorites. We are just gonna be making some sloppy joes. So again, I'm just gonna chop up some onion. For this recipe, I used about three large onions for four pounds of ground beef. 
You can do a little bit more, but a little bit less, and that's totally fine. But I'm just chopping those up here before I get started with the ground beef. So this sloppy joe recipe I have shared before on my channel, and I get a lot of comments about it that people say it's a really good one. I feel like it's a perfect balance of tangy and sweet. It's not, I don't know, it's just a really, really good one. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't do it as a freezer meal, it's just a really yummy sloppy joe recipe that seems to be a family favorite and a crowd pleaser. All right, so into my skillet here, I have four pounds of ground beef and I'm just adding all of those chopped onions in there. So to make this easier, I am going to just share the recipe for a single batch of this and then I'll write it out in my description box as well. So ignore what I'm actually putting in here because I'm just going to give you the measurements for a single batch. But for one batch, you're going to want a can of tomato sauce. That's just an eight ounce can. You're going to want a quarter cup of brown sugar and then you're going to want half a cup of barbecue sauce. I always, always use the Sweet Baby Ray's original. That's our favorite. It works really well in this recipe and then you're also going to want half a cup of ketchup for a single batch of this and then I'm going to you're going to want about two tablespoons of mustard I just use the yellow mustard you could also use the deli mustard if you want to and then you're going to want about a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar and you do want to make sure that it's apple cider vinegar and it's perfect in this recipe to just give it a little tang and then you can add in some black pepper a little bit of salt if you want to but definitely don't go overboard on it. Give that a good mix together and then you're just gonna add this right into your ground beef mixture once it's all done cooking. And then I like to simmer this for like 10 minutes or so and then you're gonna let all of this cool off so you can put it into your Ziplocs. So make sure that this mixture is completely cooled off before you're adding it into your Ziploc. So you definitely don't want any of the plastic leaching into your food. So I'm just dividing this out into four bags. I usually like to do about a pound in a freezer meal for us just because that's about the family size that we are. It works well for us, but this is definitely one of my favorite, favorite recipes. Definitely a family favorite, and I think you guys will really like this one. If you try this recipe specifically, definitely let me know down in the comments. It's just a delicious one that I think you guys will really enjoy, and then I'm just going to seal these up, pop them in the freezer, and whenever I'm ready, I can just thaw them out super quick and easy. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap up today's freezer meal video. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.